first thing is you are what you eat. The second is that stones are a real pain. And the third, there are different ways to go about stone treatment, and some are much more efficient than others. We're going to share with you that the surgery center is a great place to consider treatment. We're going to look at the biggest sector, and that is the less complicated stones. The ones we're focused on here are those that are most frequent if we become aware of the problem in a timely manner and we have a good communication between the caregivers and the patients. With modern technology, it's become a very manageable problem. Let's talk about the emergency room and kidney stone disease. Many people find themselves in the ER. They have pain. They're there for a quite long period of time because the emergency room is really focused on dealing with acute major illnesses. When a stone patient goes to the ER, first is the wait. A diagnosis is made. How are we going to treat this individual? While you're sitting there with back pain and discomfort, others who seem to have come later go before you. Generally speaking, you'll do one of two things. You'll either be sent home with pain medication or you'll be admitted to the hospital for treatment the next day. What we want to do is have you, a high priority patient, be seen promptly once it's recognized you have a stone and get you home so you're comfortable and if it is at all possible we want to send you home without the stone that created the problem. Stones usually start with back pain and it's fairly characteristic. Stones occur either in the kidney or in the ureter and either way they impair the function of the kidney. Now here is a example of a stone that is obstructed the ureter and this is the kidney and the kidney is somewhat dilated or stretched and it's that stretch that creates the problem that's what causes the pain well we have to establish a diagnosis and there's more than one way to do it this is a CT scan a CAT scan it's very precise in being able to identify the presence of stones a stone that's diagnosed early can be easily manipulated and that gives us the best outcomes in the ambulatory environment like this building represents is very efficient at providing that level of care. This is a very friendly and responsive place. Here is a stone. Now you can probably get a pretty good idea that isn't just going to slide down the ureter. That obstruction is what really causes pain. We use a ureteral stent and this allows us to bypass the obstruction of the stone and essentially drain the dilated portion of the kidney. The big pain, the back pain, goes away. Ureteroscopy. We can go almost anywhere within the urinary tract. We need to understand where we're going and where the problem is. This is called a C-arm and this is an x-ray unit. This is where the patient would be. This is the imaging system so we can see where the stones are. This patient would be comfortable because he'd be under anesthesia. But even the anesthesiologists in a surgery center are very special. Have the anesthetic that they need and then wake up quickly and be able to go home. That's real art. This is the ureteroscope. This is the instrument that we will show you how we can access various aspects of the kidney and deal with specific problems. Here's a patient who does have anesthesia, is comfortable. Here is the flexible ureteroscope. This is a stone that we visualized within the ureter, so the stone went into the kidney. And now we have some options that we can use. This is a basket that is through the ureteroscope. We can pick up that stone with this basket and we can move it to the upper part of the collecting system of the kidney. And now we can work with a straight trajectory right to the stone. We'll use the laser. We put the laser on that stone that it breaks the stone up into very small particles and the patient can just pass them. We collect these particles and we have an analysis. Now there's another technique, the shockwave lithotripter. This technology, like everything else, has been modified and improved and is now portable and this is what gives us our image. This area where the shockwave is generated is very critical to good results and we can treat a stone either in the kidney or in the ureter. We're looking at a stone in the kidney. This is a CT scan and we can use that to localize the stone with the imaging system of the lithotripter and point the energy directly 
at the stone. Here is this stone in the targeting area. Energy is delivered from the lithotriptor until it gets to the stone and ultimately it will break that. So here is a patient on our lithotripsy unit, but this gentleman I can assure you is quite comfortable and the lithotriptor is generating energy and actually breaking up the stone without any invasion of the body at all. The matter of it is, the stone is cracked and ultimately broken into very small particles that can pass down the ureter. It may not have any discomfort at all, sometimes a little. Here's our plain abdominal film and no stone. Medical expulsive therapy. What is that? Tamulosin. This medication will relax the ureter so the stone can flow through the ureter to the outside if it's small. We frequently will use that with either shockwave lithotripsy or when we use ureteroscopic surgery. Well, my patients say, okay doc, you got the stone, but what are you going to do to keep me from having another one? First off, 80% of the stones that we deal with uh, have calcium in them. The other component is called oxalate, and oxalate is in almost all of our foods. This is where diet comes into this equation. If it's a first time round, we counsel them to drink plenty of fluids. So should we change the diet? Well, the answer is probably yes. We can send many of these folks to the dietitian, having an understanding of what you consume and how it affects your potential to form stones, I think is critically important. So who should we evaluate? Well, the answer is everybody. When a person passes a stone, we do the stone analysis so we know what that stone's made of. Doing these types of tests at the right time can give us great insight. So how do we use this information? Well, here we have high calcium, anything above 200 milligrams per deciliter. We call that hypercalciuria. We know we can treat that, and there's medications that we can use to make that happen. Citrate. Citrate is a word you should take home with you from here. Citrate is a compound that does magic things in the kidney. It makes it difficult for stones to form. But if we're low on citrate, there's ways we can replace it with a commercial product, potassium citrate. Citrate is common in many of our foods. It's probably best acquired through the use of lemon, lemon being what it is, lemonade is usually the way we would go about getting it. So we can clearly add to our diet to include citrate if we use these fruits. Because you are what you eat, the diet that's good for the cardiovascular system, guess what? It works as a diet that inhibits or lessens the potential for people to develop stone. If you think you have a stone, you call your doctor, if your doctor thinks you have a stone, ask him when he refers you to a urologist if that urologist works in an ambulatory environment. Because if he does, you're going to get quick treatment and you're going to be feeling well soon. Ask him if that doctor works at the Knightsbridge Surgery Center because we're really interested in doing a good job for patients who have stone disease.